Hello YouTube, today I'm in Kerbal Space Program and in this video I'm going to go over basic rover design um, or you know actually some quite advanced rover design and then also talk about how you can control your rovers when you're actually using them. So the first thing we need to do is decide on the pod we're going to use and I would say pretty much every single time to use a pod like this, one of the thin pods that you get that is uh, unmanned even if you're going to have a manned rover at the end and I'll explain that in a second, but let's say we want to put one of these structural panels underneath and uh, we want to make it a manned rover with these. If we just put like a normal command pod, like a Kerbal command pod on here instead of putting seats on, then what we'd end up with is a rover which we can't control if the Kerbals aren't in it and um, it's also going to weigh more, which is always, uh, well it's not really a good thing and also the fact that your Kerbals can get on and off like this is quite easy quite uh, easy to do and is quite nice and look at this I mean what does that even look like that's just stupid but you can fit a lot of seats on as well you can make rovers have quite high capacities if you want to high, high Kerbal capacities which I guess is always useful and yeah that's basically what I'd use for pods um, you can use the slightly larger ones if you want a bit more reaction wheel torque um, but apart from that, I can't really see any reason for using anything other than the, I think it's the, yeah, the Octo 2. So, the next thing we're going to talk about is the wheelbase. So, obviously, the wheelbase is quite important in a rover for its stability, how it handles, that kind of thing. So, it's something that I'm going to have to go into a bit of detail about. But the first thing we're going to look at is the types of wheels that we have. Uh, the Rovemax model M1 is quite a good wheel um, if you're running something that's not too heavy and it's going to provide reasonable suspension travel or quite good suspension travel so that if you go over some bumps it's a lot or it's not going to be too difficult to um, keep control of the, uh, the rover. The Rovemax model S2 is the second type of wheel that I'm going to talk about and that is quite a lot smaller and it's good for let's say a small unmanned rover let's say if you're going to take it to Juno or something and this is actually kind of similar looking to what they used on the Curiosity rover and other rovers to Mars or Juno in Kerbal Space Program. Now these wheels, these are kind of stupid, I don't even know why they exist to be honest considering we don't have many other parts that are this big but uh, they're basically massive rover wheels that you might want to use for some things. Now these are what are seen as pretty much the best rover wheels, these are the TR2L wheels and basically these wheels are going to give you the fastest speeds that you can go at without them breaking um, but what they don't give you is that suspension travel that these wheels give you. If you see there's only a very small amount of travel in here and here they can actually go all the way up pretty much so if you've got a slightly lighter rover um, and you want some suspension travel, you want to make sure it doesn't just start bouncing about because it's so light, then these wheels are going to do a decent job and uh, I'd use those. Um, these wheels though I'd say are really good, especially as I said if you're on like an unmanned rover and you don't want to, um, you know, you're not trying to go too fast basically. But these wheels, if you want the absolute speed, are definitely going to be the best option. So, now that we've talked about the types of wheels, we've got to talk about how many you have, how spaced out they are, that kind of thing. Um, I pretty much always stick to having four wheels in, obviously, at each corner of your rover. But you can, if you want to, go and put another pair of wheels in there. The only problem with that is the suspension is quite stiff on all the wheels, and by adding more wheels, you're basically spreading out the weight between even more wheels, meaning that the suspension is going to behave like it's even more stiff, it's going to be even more bouncy, um, even more sort of... Uh, it's, it's not going to move too much because the weight of the rover has to be enough that it's going to actually make the suspension work, otherwise the suspension isn't really going to help you, and that's something that's actually, I'd say, a bit of an issue in rover design in Kerbal at the moment. And I think it'd be nice if they gave us an option in these sort of right-click menus to adjust the strength of the suspension. That'd be a really good addition, um, and that's the kind of thing that I think would really help rovers and make them a bit more, a bit more usable, a bit more easy to drive. Because if you see in real life cars, the the suspension on cars is a lot looser. Um, and the suspension on, I guess, rovers in real life is a lot looser than they are in KSP, proportionally. Anyway, so, we're going to go with a small manned rover, I think, for the example that I'm going to go through, and I'm going to talk about all the sort of design choices I could make. So, the first design choice we get, really, is the part that we're going to use to actually build our rover on. Now, I, most of the time, will use a structural panel like this. 
The only time I'll ever use something like this box here, which is meant to be similar to the Curiosity Rover, um, is if I actually want to make like a replica of the Curiosity Rover, or if I want a completely unmanned rover, which is going to have to go quite far, it takes up a bit less space, so that's kind of useful, and they can be good for you know, small rovers like that, but I'd say if you want anything that's going to go fast, you're going to need a larger wheelbase so that it's more stable. So I'd go with a structural panel like this. So when we're using a manned rover, I think because we don't really need to go too fast, these are probably going to be the best option for the wheels. Uh, we could use these, as I said, if we wanted to not go to, let's say, the moon. I'll say this is going to be a moon rover and uh, yeah, I think we probably for need the suspension travel for going all the over all the sort of slightly rough terrain that you get on the moon. Um, so these I think are going to be the best option for that. We could use these if we wanted a slower rover that maybe had a bit more control, but you know obviously would be a lot slower. But to be honest, I don't think that's too fun, and it's not really in the Kerbal spirit to have Kerbal sitting on their board out of their minds because they're going so slowly. So the next thing we need to talk about is the, uh, well, basically how we get power to the wheels, how are we going to power the rover? So there's a couple of things you need to think about. Um, first of all, are you going to be driving in day or night? Uh, or both, you know, are you going to try and drive, be able to drive all the time or just in day? Because a lot of the rovers on Mars only drive in, in the day, just because that's the only time that they can get enough power from their solar panels, obviously and they don't use too many things like this. But these are really useful in KSP. They don't generate too much power, but I'd always have at least one of these on your rover just in case um, you need to do something at night and you don't have time to wait. I would always put a couple of these things on. These, uh, these generate power all the way through the day, although they don't generate as much as solar panels. Now, solar panels wise, you're probably not going to want to use anything like this. The only time that these are really useful is when you're completely still, so they can't break. But, um, and you know, you can obviously use the uncovered ones as well if you want to. But I'd always use, if you're planning to use them while you're driving, I'd always uh, make the sacrifice of generating less power and take these things because they're so much less likely to break. So obviously you can just place a load of these on, uh, whatever whatever you're using to actually build your rover on. So yeah, it's pretty much up to you as to how many solar panels you put on. You're going to need a decent amount of them if, if you're going to try and power all the wheels at once, which is something I'll talk about when we're getting a bit closer to, um, you know, when we're actually driving the rover basically, because it is possible to turn off some of the wheels so that they don't actually use power. Yeah, but sometimes you are going to need all the wheels to have power. So I'd always recommend having um, enough that you can sort of, or at least enough battery storage that you can temporarily turn on all the wheels. So that is the next thing I'm going to talk about is battery power. And I'd always try and have at least a ba one battery, um, especially if you don't have many thermoelectric generators, because that's going to give you, well, let's say that one of the thermoelectric generators breaks or something because they are very fragile and you're relying on those, you're still going to be able to drive for a while because you've got batteries. Or well, let's say you're not using thermoelectric generators and you've got solar panels and the solar panels, um, you know, it gets it gets dark and the solar panels aren't generating enough electricity, you can just pour, uh, you know, stop, wait for a bit and wait for the batteries to charge up, then drive for five, ten minutes or something on the battery power that you have and then stop again and that's going to work fine, you know, you don't really need to worry as much about it if you've got batteries. So I'd, I'd always say it's worth putting a couple of batteries on, they are going to help and uh, they're definitely useful. And the other thing that batteries do is they weigh a reasonable amount, so they're going to pull your center of mass. Um, oh, sorry, they're just—they're actually just going to push your rover down to the ground more, basically, which is going to mean that your suspension is going to work better. And that's why I generally don't like to add more wheels, is because it's going to spread that weight around more contact points and around more suspension. So none of the suspension is going to get put under enough stress, really, to actually do some work. Because we, with suspension, you need it to be pushed a reasonable amount for it to actually do anything. Otherwise, all it is going to do is, um, you know, act like it's a solid piece because it's not being stressed enough. So I'd always say you want to do that. You want to make sure that you've got, um, you know, four wheels and you've got enough weight on your rover that it is actually going to make the suspension work. Anyway, that's looking like a reasonably okay rover, I guess. Um, but there are a few things that we can take into consideration, maybe try and add, which are going to work and help us a little bit. 
So the first thing is lights. Now if you want to operate in the dark, if you want your rover to work in the dark, then I'd always say it's worth sticking a couple of lights at least on the front so you can see if there's anything really rough coming up in front of you. And they also look kind of cute, I guess, in a Kerbal way. So yeah, they look kind of cool if you stick a couple of them on. And they are going to help as well, they do provide some practical use. The next thing I'd like to talk about is self-writing systems, because it is possible to build self-writing rovers in KSP. Um, so the way that most people do this, and I'd say the best way to do this most of the time, is to stick on a couple of these um, landing legs. And what these are going to do uh, is basically if you flip over, you can actually activate the landing legs and they're going to push you back over. And I'll show that at the end when we're, um, when we're actually piloting our rover. So, you know, that's kind of an interesting concept and it works quite well. Uh, it saved a lot of my rovers in the past and it's definitely worth, you know, you make, you know taking, it, taking advantage of it, basically. So that's, that's pretty much it. I've talked about pretty much all the design elements that go into a rover. Um, there's a couple of other things like, you know, making sure the mass is enough to work wherever you're going. I'd say it's unrealistic to take a rover somewhere to somewhere like Minmus and actually expect the expect it to be stable because there just isn't enough gravity on Minmus. But somewhere like Eve it's a lot easier, somewhere like Juno it works quite well and the moon works reasonably well as well. So that's pretty much it. Now let's go and have a look and see how we can actually drive something like this. So here we are, we're uh, on the runway now and uh, the first thing we can try and do is disable the motors in the front wheels because we're going to be on reasonably flat ground so we don't need four wheel drive, two wheel drive is enough. And then the next thing we're going to do is make sure we're not turning or anything, then we're going to lock the steering in the rear wheels. So that's going to make it a lot more stable, a lot more easy to handle, and a bit less crazy. So you'll see while we're driving we actually do have enough power in the daylight from these solar panels and things to power at least two of the wheels. We may even be able to power all four of them, I'm not going to worry about that though. We can also turn these lights on if we want to. That's not really a big deal. Um, and you can see we're using the batteries as well. They're not even being used if we look in the resources menu. So we're doing pretty well. This rover is working reasonably well. And it's reasonably stable as well, especially with the um, rear wheels turned off steering and only using two wheel drive. Uh, the two wheel drive doesn't really have much of an effect on stability, but you can see the, wild, uh, the wide wheelbase is really helping make sure that it doesn't like flip over or anything when you're going around corners. It's really good for that. But let's say this thing was to flip over if I turn on gravity in the cheat menu. We can try just, um, well, I'll put the brakes on and this will be quite fun to watch. We'll do some flips and things probably and uh, flip it over. You'll see, there we go. So let's say we've went over a bump or something and flipped it over. What we can do now is activate the, the landing gear and that's going to flip us back over on its own. So that's really useful. And um, one other thing that I'd like to say when you're driving your rover, it doesn't matter so much if you've only got a little probe core like this, but if you've got a slightly bigger one, it will make a difference, is that you toggle torque on that. And that's going to mean that when you go around corners, it isn't going to try and, um, isn't going to try and flip you over in whichever direction you're turning. Or when you're trying to go forwards, it's not going to try and lean you forwards or anything. Because that can be a bit annoying. Anyway, thanks for watching the video guys. I hope you liked it. I hope it helped. And if it did, then please give it a thumbs up and a favourite. Comment below if you have any suggestions or questions though. And as always, thanks for watching and have a nice day.